the first place that we have to kind of go into is this definition of of what is success for them and who are they outside of their business? Because hustling, in my opinion, is never going to give you what you want. Like it's always going to lead to burnout. It's always a recipe for for burnout. And so we kind of have to look at some of those limiting beliefs that are below the surface that are causing my clients to push so hard, to, to go beyond exhaustion and look at, okay, what's really the motivation behind all that? You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a terrific one. Our guest is a life and business mindset coach who specializes in helping high-achieving female entrepreneurs move from living a life of burnout to a life where they are connected to their emotions, body, and spirit. Mary Hyatt, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, excited for this conversation. It is. It's going to be a great one. I love it. Me too. And uh, I think we can, I think, the, I think the timing on this is great because I, I'm, I, I'm getting emails, it seems, a lot more recently, just or tweets or conversations of people being on edge. Yeah. <laughs> So this is uh, this is maybe what we can talk about today a bit uh, around uh, what's going on in the business. A business, small business, is already uh, can be uh, stressful and create anxiety. Let alone everything else that's going on in the world. But before we get into all of that, Mary, please tell us a little bit about you, your career journey leading up to this point. Yeah, I cannot wait to hop into that topic. By the way, because it is. It is in the air. It is in the air. So I know we'll we'll dive into that. But yeah, so if you were to rewind the clock about seven-ish years, you would have met a very different version of me. So just kind of like a little Mary history. I am a college dropout. So already, y'all, I have to just say, I am just so blown away by your ability to just have a career where you actually really need like true education from a university. It's just super impressive. But that was not my journey. I I had so much anxiety growing up. And as I went into my college years, it actually was the reason that I ended up dropping out was just this unbelievable amount of anxiety that I didn't have the tools or the skill set to be able to process and deal with. And it ended up being something that in the long run was a a huge blessing, brought me to this place. But I've always been really interested in psychology and sociology and understanding why people think the way that they think. And so I was in school for psychology before I dropped out. And then life took a different path. I got married at a really young age and was sort of doing a lot for my now ex-husband's business. He was a contractor. And I was actually doing the bookkeeping of his business for a long time, for many years, even though I didn't have education in it. I'm a, I'm a quick study. I was like, all right, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to learn. And I knew that ultimately, though, not being able to pursue what my heart was calling me towards was not going to be a fulfilling life. So because of all the anxiety and the depression that I was dealing with, I put on about 80 pounds. I was in a place where I was just mentally, physically, spiritually exhausted and burnt out, like to the point where I was not really functioning very well at all. And It wasn't until I sort of had a come to Jesus moment with myself where I was like, all right, this this can't be all there is to life. Like being miserable, being being in a life that is truly not one that I love or that makes me feel alive is not the way that I want to continue on. So I ended up going on this journey of discovering who I was, learning 
tools and skills and techniques to be able to handle my emotions and learn how to come into my truest version of myself using my voice and really leading with vulnerability and authenticity. And over time, um, I ended up going to yoga teacher training school at my heaviest weight. I was 240 pounds and I had no yoga experience whatsoever. Ended up becoming um, a yoga teacher that led me eventually into this role of life coaching. And y'all, it has been such a beautiful, messy just so messy, such a messy journey of coming into this place where now I get to empower other female entrepreneurs into embracing who they are and really learning to lead with their heart and their intuition and their femininity to create a really successful business. So it's been a a windy road to get me here. Um, But, you know, as with any journey, each piece of that, you know, each step along the way is so important and so meaningful. Remarkable, uh, absolutely remarkable, and I, I'm always amazed at uh, the connections. I mean, your story of your your marriage and the stress that that there was present in the marriage, and you're not a bookkeeper, but yet your husband's looking to you to do the bookkeeping. I mean, that mm-hmm. that's right out of my backstory. My father had a small business, and you know, it's like, yeah mom, do the, do Linda, you know, do the book, you know, you can yeah. do the books. Right. And uh, every, every listener right now is that, yeah, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what's wrong. And, uh, you know, can be very detrimental to, it was very hard on our, my, our family. It's hard on the relationship. Uh, and so you, you, um, that's an interesting point, but you then went on this journey of finding who you really were and now are helping others, do that, uh, you know, when you, what do you think were the keys to actually getting yourself out of that? Yeah. You know, I think part of any person's journey and mine for sure was it kind of started with admitting where I was. Like I had to, we say in the South, so I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised. So I'm very Southern. And we have this thing we say, um, a come to Jesus moment. I don't know if that's like a universal term, but we say it a lot in the South. And that's sort of where you look yourself square in the, in the face and you have a sobering moment of recognizing where you are. And I think that for any of us, especially right now with everything going on, it's like that moment where we can go, you know what, the truth is I'm not happy. Or the truth is I'm really overwhelmed. Or the truth is, you know, how it was with my my husband, like we were gonna need more than this business to hold us together. And And so for me, before I made honestly any change and kind of walked myself out of a very dysfunctional marriage, but also into a very successful career was admitting where I was starting from, admitting the hard truth of where I was at that point. Because then it's like, okay, now I kind of am willing to look at my stuff and have a diagnosis and then sort of determine, okay, to move forward, then what is that medicine that I'm going to need in order to heal from what's broken? What is what is keeping me from this life that I know that I was meant for and made for and created for? And so I think that one of those tools is this kind of radical honesty where we say, and I have my clients do this all the time, and it would be great for anybody listening to do right now is to kind of fill in the blank to this sentence. Um, if I gave myself permission, I think that's such a a powerful way of sort of opening the door to this. If I gave myself permission, I feel deprived of, and then fill in the blank. I feel deprived of like sleep, emotional support, time to myself. Maybe it's companionship or intimacy or touch, physical energy, peace. You know, this is, this is kind of that moment where we admit that we are in a state of exhaustion or numbing or burnt out or survival. And it has to, it has to start there. Almost looking at like, okay, from a scale of one to 10, like how often am I living and finding myself in survival mode? One being not at all, 10 being 24 seven, like how often am I in this state of survival? So to me, 
the way out is, is knowing where to start, and that's admitting where we are right now. Mm, you know, it's an interesting, because often people, people don't talk about where they are. They're just looking at where they you know, want to be, right? Yeah. It's like, so, so this idea of sort of saying where you're at and getting that foundation. And when you meet entrepreneurs, because you work with a lot of uh, female uh, women entrepreneurs, when you meet with them, what, what is the, what is that process like? Like, I'm, I'm curious what, when someone's, you know, what they come to you with, but as well, what, what's the final moment where they say, you know what, I need to get help. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because it, I think it kind of presents itself in a lot of different ways, but ends up being sort of the core, there's sort of one to two core root issues that are happening. And typically I'm working with women who are already successful in some right. Like they've got a business that's working, they're paying their bills. Oftentimes they're six figures and above, you know, they're, they're doing what they know to create a successful business. And they're usually sort of the expert in their field. Like they're the go-to person for whatever they're offering, their service or their, their product. And What I find so often is that people are coming to me because they are finding that even if their business is working, some other area of their life is failing. Like oftentimes people come to me with body image issues and in this place where they want to learn how to love their body and they hate their body, like their relationship to their physical body or to their health is really broken and really feeding off a lot of shoulds and shame. So that's kind of one sort of the avenue in, that sort of one avenue in that people come to me for. And then also relationship stuff, relationships that are suffering under the fact that they're overworking. And I would say kind of across the board, everybody that I work with would consider themselves an overachiever, would consider themselves high performing. And yet it's not translating to the rest of their life and they're ultimately not happy. They're ultimately unfulfilled. They're ultimately wanting more. So to me, kind of the place we start is, okay, if we can admit where you're at and this is a place where you're unhappy, like there's something that feels like it's missing from your life. Maybe their their femininity is closed off and they've been moving out of their masculine energy. Maybe their intimacy with their partner is really lacking, their relationship to their body. But ultimately when you start to peel back those layers, it's like, okay, wait a minute. Why are you hustling so hard? You know, what would happen if you stopped doing everything that you're doing? And what I find for most of the women is that everything boils down to this feeling like they are not enough. That in some way, shape or form, especially in their business, they're, they're working at proving their worthiness. So they're overachieving, they're hustling, they're, they're working late hours, they are working on the weekends, and there's not a huge identity outside of, of what they do. And so the first place that we have to kind of go into is this definition of, of what is success for them and who are they outside of their business? Because hustling, in my opinion, is never going to give you what you want. Like it's always going to lead to burnout. It's always a recipe for for burnout. And so we kind of have to look at some of those limiting beliefs that are below the surface that are causing my clients to push so hard, to, to go beyond exhaustion and look at, okay, what's really the motivation behind all that? You know, burnout, it's one of those things that many people probably uh, dangle with or, you know, they're on the verge of, and it's not until one has become burnt out that they realize that they were close to being burnt out. And once you're burnt out, it's kind of hard to get out of being burnt out. It's a tricky yeah. situation. What are the signs of burnout coming? Yeah, <laughs> there are so many. And I'm sure like everybody's gone. It's going to go. I'm asking yep. personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> for a friend. Um, <laughs> for a friend, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so, so many different burnouts. Uh, uh, s- symptoms, I would say, or like red flags to burnout would be like 
emotional, um, like limited emotional capacity. So people who are right on that verge are super reactive. So like we're seeing this like crazy right now in our climate today where people are super quick to react. There's almost like this threshold that has become very, very, very small. So it could be finding yourself crying for no reason. Ladies, where are you at? Like, <laughs> this is this is so common. Or like, 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 why am I even crying? Just being a little bit more emotional than normal. Um, it could look like anger coming through. So you find yourself driving and you find yourself flicking off the person next to you or yelling and you're like, what the heck? Like, this is not even, this is not even me. What What is this all about? Um, it could look like, just being like what I call on red. So it's sort of where your nervous system is running hot. And I think that this year has intensified this in such a, a unbelievable kind of rate where it's like our foot is all the way down on the gas pedal and we are in fifth gear 24-7 and we can't figure out how to downshift. So it's almost like this very high-pitched hum, like zzzz, where everything is sensitive. Like our, our bodies feel sensitive. We're very quick to feeling anxiety. It's almost like our body has gone into that fight, flight, or freeze state and it got stuck there. And so everything feels like a threat. Every feel, everything feels like danger. And to me, what contributes to this is when we are not taking care of ourselves. So sort of like the way to burnout is when you're skipping meals, when you are not allowing yourself to rest or go to sleep when you're tired, when you are working late hours. But I think that ultimately, you know that feeling where it's like you have to have several cups of coffee in the morning just to wake up and get through the day. When your adrenals feel shot, when there's really like nothing left in the tank. I mean, to me, that 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 is all like, hey, pay attention. Wait a minute. Uh, some something is is on the verge here. And I think that if we can really be gentle with ourselves, because I think part of the the reason why sometimes we're not so honest with ourselves and have that come to Jesus moment with ourselves is because we know internally that we'll meet ourselves with shame and judgment. Like we're gonna if, if we admit like, hey. I've sort of done this to myself, that we're going to blame ourselves, that we're going to feel really bad about it. And I don't think anybody would want to feel that way. And so we avoid it and we numb more. We cope more. We avoid more. We we turn on Netflix again versus feeling what is here. And so I think that part of the recipe to come out of this is meeting ourselves with a lot of loving, a lot of tenderness, a lot of compassion of like, oh, like sweet self, like, of course you're about to be in this place of burnout, or maybe you already are in burnout, or maybe you're totally depleted and exhausted. Like, how can we meet that with love versus judgment? And I think when we can have that sort of in the back of our minds to really seek to understand rather than judge, it it allows us to be more honest with where we're at. It's, I think, important for people to to pay attention to this right now, especially our listeners, because our listeners, they are bookkeepers running their own business. So they're susceptible to everything that you've said as well. They're working with their clients are small, medium-sized business owners Mm -hmm. who are all on the same frequency, which could be, you know, when someone, when someone acts inappropriately snaps at us or is, you know, grumpy or whatever. Often it's like we take it personally or it's like, well, what did I do? It's like most times, even in a good time, it's got nothing to do with us. Right. Something that happened, you know, with the domino effect that happened. A couple of dominoes, you, you know, we're the one that just got hit by the domino. And, but yet if we're not aware of that, then it's just like, it's like putting gasoline and fire together all the time. These little explosions and we can't go anywhere often because of the situation with with covid and lockdowns and risk for family and trying to stay healthy we're stuck to our little bubbles our little homes but yet there must be ways that we can um get into this loving place because it's it's hard i would say too right you know 
it's hard to go from being at that frequency, that buzz, to I'm going to love myself. So what would you recommend people do to to put themselves into a place where they can they can actually move in that trajectory towards love and and uh, presence uh, of who they are. Yeah, such a great question and so important to even slow down to even consider. Oh, there might be a different way of experiencing this time. I mean, to me, I think first and foremost, we have to intentionally sort of curate our lives and asking ourselves, like, what is the quality of life that I want to have right now? Like, I think, I think we're realizing this, that, you know, we initially thought all this was going to be temporary. And I remember working with my financial advisors at the beginning of all this. And they said, Mary, they said, listen, you need to treat this pandemic. And this was like, this was the very, very, I think this is April. This is like the very beginning of everything. And they said, you need to treat this like it's going to be here for the next two to three years. So whatever you do in your business, you want to set it up for the next two to three years. And I was so grateful for that wisdom and insight because everybody else was saying, oh, this is just going to be a couple months. Like, don't worry about it. Just get through. Just like, just get through June. I remember that being like, it was such a strong statement. Just get through June. Well, here we are <laughs> almost at the end of the year. And like, there's not really an end in sight. I mean, we really don't know how long this is going to last. So I think slowing down to go, okay, knowing that this is going to be here for a while, what kind of life, what kind of ex experience of life do I want to have moving through this? And identifying that piece first so that we can intentionally create the boundaries that we need in order to set ourselves up where we're not just having to recover all the time. So to me, part of this love is being in advocacy for ourselves, really uh, allowing ourselves to have a vote in how we want to move through this time and then set up the appropriate boundaries so that we are ensured that that happens. Because as we know, with working with different business owners and clients, like they have their own agenda. They have their own urgency. They have their own timeline of things that have to happen that can come in and sort of hijack our quality of life if, we're, if we don't have appropriate boundaries. So part of this is like getting clear, what is it that I want? And then making that commitment to yourself that you do not violate those boundaries. And I think that is, first and foremost, one of the most loving things that you can do for yourself is making these sort of like anchoring non-negotiables. Like, I don't work on the weekends, or I have a technology-free Sunday, or um, I make it a non-negotiable to move my body before I get on and answer emails or start getting into my computer. So I think that we can set it up. I think we have a lot more say in how our lives look every day than I think we typically think that we do. So I think it starts there. And then I think, secondly, this is a journey. Learning to love yourself, to prioritize yourself, to meet yourself with tenderness and love is, is a journey. I mean, it's a journey of belief, believing you deserve it, believing that you can have that, belief that it's not selfish. I know that for women, so often we think that taking care of ourselves is super selfish. So it's it's belief work. But I think one of like the super practical things that I encourage all of my clients to do and to start their day with, especially when there's not a lot of time for a full-blown morning routine, is a simple check-in. And what that looks like is taking three to five minutes. And I'm all about efficiency. So it's like, let's not take an hour. Three to five minutes of connecting, putting your hand on your heart, closing your eyes and really asking yourself, what do I need today? What do I need today? And really allowing that inner part of yourself to furnish an answer. It could be that you need to have better time blocking. It could be that you need to make space for a nap. It could be that you need to make sure that you're really nourishing yourself or drinking enough water or moving your body or calling a friend or all the different things that we can do to support ourselves. But it's slowing down to ask ourselves, what do I need? And that begins a relationship of self-love that can blossom over time to even deeper forms of self-care. But I think it starts with slowing down to listen and ask ourselves, what do I need today? I think listener right now should put this podcast on pause and do that now. 
you know, it would be an opportunity to tap into the powerful intuition that we all have around what we really need. And that really could be the very first step into the message and direction that one needs to take to to go towards the direction that you've been speaking about now. Because, it, it, you know, in my journeys, it's always come back to that one thing. You talked about yoga, right? Mm-hmm. For you, yoga was that one thing that created a whole new whole new set of behaviors and and set you onto a totally different trajectory. And if you look back, if it wasn't for the yoga, you might be living a different life today, but yeah. you somehow found yoga and then yoga was that one behavior that then you changed hundreds of behaviors and things in your in your life. So listener, put it on pause. And we're going to keep talking, of course, going with the interview, but you could put it on pause and then come back to us. So when when people take that pause, talk a little bit about that. You know, you, you're asking yourself for these answers. We live in this world of technology and computers and and very material. But yet, I think what gets lost is that there's this really unknown power of the human mind and the human body that we often just don't even utilize. Much more powerful than any technology on the planet, but yet we're not using it. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And I think that we, we our own selves are our own technology. I mean, there's nothing more advanced than the way the human brain works. And I do so much work around mindset because it always comes back to how we think. I mean, we can look at anything in our lives, whether it is the status of our bank account, our quality of our relationships, the state of our body, the car we drive, the house we live in, like literally anything. If we look at and kind of rewind and go, how did I get here? How did this come to fruition? How is my life what it is? It always starts with a thought. And for most people, everything that they think throughout the day are a series of old habituated thoughts, old thoughts that we've picked up from childhood, from our parents, from our schoolmates, from our teachers, from our church, wherever. And we're kind of, our brains are in this place of autopilot. And and so I think what's so beautiful and so powerful is when we can begin to go, oh my God, I have a say-so in how I'm thinking that will eventually change the results the quality of my life all all through going internal. I mean, it, it, that old saying of like, you can see way more with your eyes closed than you can with them open. And I just go, oh my God, there's so much wisdom that we have inside of ourselves. So much intelligence. So, so many answers are found inside. And a teacher that I've worked a lot with by the name of Robert Holden, he's a... Um, a Hay House author. He is just an amazing coach, works with a lot of huge corporate companies like Dove. And he instructs all of the, all the people that he works with to come back to their heart as their reference point and to go vertical before they go horizontal. And I think this is so valuable right now because everything in technology is screaming at us, a solution, a cure, something that we need to do to make sure that our life is amazing. And so we start looking at, okay, well, if I can just lose the weight, if I can just get on a new client, if I can just, 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 and we start going horizontal, plotting out, okay, what's in our future? How can I achieve the next thing? How can I hit my next goal? In reality, that's never going to be a fulfilling life because it's all input from other people, from other people's agendas on our life. And so what my mentor has really taught me and something that now I I love to teach is the power in going vertical first. And that looks like connecting with your higher power, whatever that is for you, universe, source, God, whatever. And tapping in internally to that connection to source, to higher power, and, and getting your input by going up before letting all of those voices from the outside start making demands on your life. So I think that if that resonates with you at all, I would encourage you to look at a, a practice of going up versus going out and, and little by little kind of seeing 
seeing how that shifts. Because to me, everything that we need to know happens when we slow down, when we connect, and when we align. I agree. And I, I, I think there's a couple of things that have come up in this conversation, asking yourself, going introspective, asking yourself, you know, what do I need today? Closing your eyes, being present to the moment, going vertical up to your higher, higher being, you know, the one that whatever that resonates for, for each one of our listeners. And and just doing that may be a, 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 di- a direction that's going to give you more peace in your life, more creativity, more energy, you know, allow you to be truly who you are. And so you know, what, that, what, what shows up then is you're actually bringing the competitive advantage. You're bringing this, this incredible technology that you own is your body, right? That you're the host of, right? You can bring that to your business and use all of those real powers in your, in your life for your relationships, for your business, for your clients. And so are there other resources you would recommend? You recommended Robert Holden, I believe mm-hmm. it was, um, yoga practice, uh, sure meditation, but are there any other resources that you would recommend to our listener to, to put them on uh, into this mindfulness. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite books that I recommend all the time to business owners and entrepreneurs is a book called Thrive by Ariana Huffington of Huffington Post. And what I love about this book is she takes a a very well-researched approach to well-being. You know, she is one of the most successful women of our time, incredibly successful business. And she shares a little bit about her journey around this idea of, hey, at the end of the day, success really isn't enough. Success isn't going to be the the thing that brings you a sense of well-being, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy and happiness. I mean, there are so many stories of people who are millionaires, billionaires, and are suicidal and are just in a place where they're so unhappy. And so she really takes a a very highly researched, kind of almost scientific approach to this concept of well-being. And so what I like about it for for women particularly who need some proof to back this up, I think oftentimes we can hear like, oh, you should do yoga or you should do meditation or mindfulness. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who's not saying that? But I think once you can back that up by research and she does this so eloquently, all of a sudden it puts some legs to this concept of mindfulness and of sort of going inward and gives you... uh, a foundation for understanding it in a way that's not so esoteric. I mean, it's really sort of like the part of your brain that's super analytical. It's using that to write the book. So I think that if there's any sort of skepticism around even like the woo-woo-ness of meditation or mindfulness, this is a great book to pick up and read. It was very informative for me, but Thrive by Ariana Huffington. Highly, highly recommend. Beautiful. And then of course, Mary, I'm sure you have all sorts of resources at your website that people, our listener, can can go and check out uh, where you're at and the things you're working on and as well uh, the services that you provide. And they can go to maryhyatt.com and that's M-A-R-Y-H-Y-A-T-T.com. And so I'd recommend our listeners go and get more uh, of what you've heard today on this podcast. Mary, this has been great. I want to thank you on behalf of our listeners for coming and sharing your journey with us and as well sharing how you're helping other entrepreneurs uh, get through extraordinary times like these and, and move into a place of where they really are living a life of their dreams. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. Beautiful. And with that, We wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast to learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources. You can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye.
You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.